North Korea says its long-range rocket has successfully placed a satellite in orbit. The launch early on Wednesday was the second by the reclusive state this year after an earlier attempt in April failed shortly after liftoff. The move by Pyongyang has drawn strong criticism from its neighbors. Both South Korea and Japan reacted to the launch with Tokyo saying it could not tolerate the action. North Korea is currently under UN sanctions and is banned from conducting missile and other nuclear-related tests. And for more now, let's go to anti-war campaigner Eric Sirotkin, joining us live from the US. Eric, very nice to have you with us. So what uh, ramifications could this have for security in the region as a whole? Well, the Korean stand standoff has ramifications as a whole. I mean, we're we're facing a situation in which this country is continually isolated. It is not, uh, there's not been a treaty to end the Korean War. And we think that this is going to set back discussions. It's going to set back uh, because people are going to overreact to the launch of a satellite. I don't understand, and many of us in the United States don't understand, why people aren't up in arms all the time that we have yet to end the Korean War after 60 years. Uh, meanwhile, Pyongyang says its launch was meant to put a satellite into orbit, but critics say North Korea is testing technology to mount a nuclear warhead on a long-range missile. What's really behind the launch there? Well, what the launch was intended to do most likely was to end the year of celebration that's taken place in North Korea around the uh, Kim, uh, Kim Il-sung's 100th birthday and such. And it's often a little more symbolic. But uh, they were told not to launch with ballistic missile technology. And to the North Koreans, you have to put yourself in their shoes. They believe in their sovereignty and speak about it all the time. And consequently, they felt that the launch of this missile, if you will, or this satellite, satellite was an effort to show that they are a highly sophisticated technical nation. The issue now is not the launch itself. The issue is how are we going to respond to it and are we going to work to bring them more into the circle of nations or are we going to use this as some act of war? And I think that we have to look at peace and diplomatic relations as the only route. Yeah, absolutely. But negotiations on dismantling North Korea's nuclear program fell apart, uh, fell apart three years ago. Any chance they will resume after today's event? Yeah, I, you know, the idea, you know, Winston Churchill said it's better to talk, talk, talk than fight, fight, fight. And it's really true. These are causes to have more talks, not less talks. And the North Koreans have been willing to attend talks. Uh, other nations have, certainly Russia has, and other nations uh, that have been involved in the six-party talks, are, are, such as Japan, South Korea, and the United States, are less uh, willing to engage in talks when these things happen. But what the UN said was not only don't use ballistic missile technology, it said we must have a commitment to a peaceful, diplomatic, and political solution to the situation there. And that's what uh, is really crying out. And I think Russia and other countries must finally say, now, wait a minute. What is the root of the problem? You're saying many nations are involved and basically Washington tried to deter the North from its nuclear ambitions by offering food aid in exchange for a freeze of missile activity. But the deal collapsed after the April launch. What's the U.S. going to do now? Yeah, I think at this point in time, unfortunately, we won't really know uh, until there's going to be a new Secretary of State coming in, and I'm afraid that the U.S. is going to even step back from its previous position mm -hmm. of talking to people in which we have profound differences, which had been Obama's viewpoint when he came into office, but has not really happened with North Korea enough. And so I'm afraid that the United States is going to step back, talk less, isolate more, and keep food and other things from a lot of the Korean people that need it most. And really, food should never be a weapon under international law. And it's really necessary that we not overreact to this launching of a satellite, but that we say this is a cause and a reason 
to sit down finally and put an end to this war with some kind of peace regimen or treaty. Mm -hmm. And uh, Washington and South Korea recently reached a deal that uh, extends the South's ballistic missile range, making Seoul capable of, capable of hating any part of North Korea. Uh, so with that kind of approach, how achievable is peace on the Korean Peninsula then? I think at this point in time, it gets increasingly difficult. The, the military base that the United States, and primarily South Korea, is building on Jeju Island in an effort to create a ring around China, perhaps, or to deal with North Korea, are all setbacks to peace. What's necessary, I think, at this point in time is, not, is to step back from the process and the outside countries, the other countries around the world, must say, wait a minute, a peaceful China, South Korea, North Korea, uh, Japan as a region will have a huge impact on world peace. And I think that it's really incumbent that we put pressures toward peace and not toward uh, amping up the conflict anymore. All right. Anti-war campaigner Eric Sirotkin, thank you very much indeed for sharing your views with us.